Greetings. Let's talk about stall. Anyway, what's poppin' guys? Here we are back today for another competitive analysis video. This video is going to be uh, going into detail about how to deal with stall and various strategies used for people to pretty much beat stall. Now, first off, um, before I even get into, I guess, like the meat of the video, let me just preface the video by saying this is not like a 100% way to always beat stall. The number one way you win a Pokemon game is by playing well. So no matter what I tell you in this video or the strategies I write, they might not be, um, they might not work if you don't play well. So that's pretty much the basic thing. Honestly, breaking stall, um, I'm going to teach you why, like for people who struggle with stall in general, I'm pretty much going to say basically why stall wins in the first place and that people, um, basically the best way to beat stall in general is pretty much up your playing ability versus stall. And you, I, I'm not of the belief that you can pretty much train somebody in Pokemon or like teach them how to get better. I'm of the opinion that Pokemon is literally all experience. The more you play, the better you get no matter what. Um, obviously that's not true for some people. I mean, some people play forever and are still pretty average at the game. And that's not me throwing shade. That's just honestly a fact or they just don't care enough to like try and get better. Um, but I am of the opinion that the more Pokemon you play, the better you get, the more you understand, you'll notice trends in team building, you'll notice what how people usually play a certain situation, um, and that kind of thing, you'll understand how people, um, you'll be able to uh, gauge people's skill level based on the plays they make in their game, so you know what kind of play you should make, um, seeing how much uh, credit you should give your opponent, and that kind of thing, and all of those are really, really important, thing for, uh, important things to take note of for when you play stall so basically the main things i see on my videos are stuff like how do you be stall on the ladder blah 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 blah. stall is this stall is that stall is so impossible to take on sableye is the most uh, like unbeatable pokemon in the entire game i have so many problems with chancy amoongus gives me depression i see all kinds of comments like this now there are ways to deal with stall uh through team building and there are ways to deal with it through building so did i just say the same thing yeah oh my god i already messed up all right there are ways to deal with it through team building and there are ways to deal with it through playing so let's go with the first option which is going to be Pokemon you can use to deal with stall. Now anyone can Google, like just you can pretty much literally Google Smogon stall breakers, but I'm pretty much gonna go into detail on why specific cores of Pokemon or Mons in general are really really good versus stall. Okay, so first off, let me just pull up the most common stall team seen at the moment. Alright, bam. As you can see, Sableye, Weavile, Skarmory, Chansey, Amoongus, Quagsire, the big six. This is what this is what your nightmares are made of, alright? So let's let's dispel some rumors. Okay, so some of the initial cores you can use to just obliterate, this is just straight team building. Uh, Bandit Tyranitar plus Charizard Y. I always gas this core up, but it's for good reason. It obliterates most stall teams. As you can see, um, this team has very, very few switch-ins to a Bandit Titar. Um, the Skarmory is actually counter, which is pretty much the main switch in. It's physically defensive counter, but it's not Rocky Helmet, so you don't actually lose too much clicking Crunch. Crunch does up to 40% to Skarm. If you get the defense drop, that's almost a 2 KO. Even then, I wouldn't stay in risking rolls on the counter, but if you play smart, I mean, you don't have to. Chansey, for example, um, if you bring your Bandit Teeth in there, they stay on a superpower, they're gonna die. You pursue it, you're doing 50%. How's a 50% Chansey with rocks up? Well, I mean, Sableye's there, so maybe you won't have rocks up. But how's a 50% Chansey gonna be able to deal with your special threat now? That people need to really understand that the biggest thing with stall, when you're playing against stall, Who's going to be playing more aggressive? The guy with six walls or the person with a balanced or offensive team? Obviously, the person who's going to be playing more safe is going to be the dude with stall. You're going to be playing more offensive because you need to find the right opportunities, uh, the right openings in the battle to strike and get the advantage versus stall. Stall has six walls. They don't have to play aggressively. They can just wall out your whole team, play it patiently, find the right turn to bring in their Weavile, Pursuiter, or whatever they really have um, to deal with offensive stuff. That's all they have to do. So you need to be the person who's taking advantage of their team. You're not, you can't just be waiting for stall. You don't play react, you play reactionary. You have to play offensively. You need to try and get around all the things they want to do. If I have a Manaphy out, this dude is most definitely going to go into his chancy. No, you, I need to double into my hair across right there and then and find the right opportunity to make the offensive play. That's what you need to do. So if you have a stall break on your team, you can't just assume it's going to 100% win. I can have a Charizard Y and think it's just going to win. But if I keep on fire blasting as the dude goes into chancy and lose all my PP, that's not going to be, that's, I'm not going to win. I'm going to be getting played, he's going to get up Stealth Rocky, he's going to get off a T-Wave, and it's just, I'm going to be losing momentum, and it's going to be much, much harder. So the core of Bandit Tyranitar plus Charizard White, in theory, will pretty much always obliterate Stall, because it does trap the Chansey down to 50%, and then Chansey will not be able to come out on Fire Blast, it's actually a 2 hit KO. Um, so that's pretty much the mentality between that core. Uh, T-Tar is able to put Chansey in a 50-50 position. Chansey doesn't even run T-Wave that much anymore, well, some Stalls do. Okay, but I'm just using the most common Stall as an example, the one that people are... Uh, the most annoyed by as you can see you just pursue 
the chance he's down to 50, that kind of thing. Even then, Bantar in general pretty much breaks through this team. Like I said, only Dark Resist is Weavile. Obviously, that thing can't come in as 2 ko um, It doesn't pack Low Kick usually because they're all banded. Sableye gets 2 ko Quag takes like 50, I think. Um, Stone Edge in general would obliterate all these Pokemon besides Quag. And again, Quag isn't risking coming in on uh, Earthquake unless it is um, at 100%. So. Yeah, that's basically what you have to look at with Stahl, Zardwai, again, just kills all these guys besides Chansey. So, that is a good core, Zardwai, Titar. Um, one of the most basic Stahl cores, like, that's like an ancient thing, and um, honestly, cores in general, I don't really believe in. To quote Jam, cores are a myth, it's a primitive way of team building, and that is true to an extent, but I don't see Bandit, Titar, and Zardwai as a core, as much as I see them just as fantastic partners for each other. Um, Tar, more of a good partner to Zard, than Zard is a good partner for Titar, but... You pretty much get the gist of it, so let's just move on into another team building example to deal with stall. Okay, so let's get back into uh, more strategy. Sorry guys, I just my computer kind of messed up, so I'm just coming back. That's why I was acting like there was a break. Anyway, let's move into more um, strategies to dealing with stall. So another big thing that people use is Life Orb Tornadus. That is a really, really good Pokemon in general for uh, taking on stall. It can pretty much punish every single Pokemon. Uh, Chansey isn't a good switch into it because Life Orb Superpower will dominate that thing. And if it has knockoff, that's even worse because Chansey without any Violet loses a lot of its viability. Um, uh, Sableye, which people just love to switch into everything, gets 2 kill by Life Orb Hurricane. Uh, Weavile gets um, O-Code, Skarm gets Heat Waved, uh, Quag takes like 80, Amoongus dies, that kind of thing. So it is really nice. You kind of have to play smart because again, the Weavile will be in the back ready to pursue you. But um, if you play smart, you know, you don't, um, you pretty much only use it to kill like the Pokemon you need to. You can obviously outplay the pursuit and that kind of thing. So it is really, really nice versus those. Um, Torn, I wouldn't put it at like the very top of Pokemon that beats Stall. But it is one of the Pokemon that does excel versus stall and a Pokemon that you can definitely use to punish it. Um, especially when you have Taunt, Knockoff, Superpower, and Hurricane. That set in general just kind of um, annoys the bulkier builds. Uh, well, specifically more towards balance, but like I'm saying, stall in general does get hurt. Um, another Pokemon that people just like ignore because of Amoongus, Specs Keldeo. I always rant about this Pokemon, how amazing it is. But Amoongus can switch in and get burned. But then, well, what if on the next time Amoongus switches in is Icy Winds? That's what I'm talking about, about playing offensively and you're playing against the stall you need to play the player that's basically what i'm talking about when i say you need to play offensively um if i keep scalding the amoongus every single time as it comes in even after i burn it with keldeo what is that doing i'm just losing pp i'm losing momentum that kind of thing but say um it's keldeo versus quagsire for example i've already burnt the amoongus it's at about 80 percent and i icy wind at the next turn the icy wind does around uh 35 percent but because of the burn I'm going to 2-hit KO him. Now what? I can double out on that turn into another Pokemon to catch his uh, Chansey switch in and not get more momentum. Amoongus is at a much lower HP than it would have been at. And next time with my Keldeo, I can just click that Hydro Pump and obliterate something. That's how you need to think of the battle. You need to always think, what what's my stall opponent going to do? Because again, he's not going to be playing the, the most offensive game you are. You need to play that opponent more than um, you need to play the team. You need to get into in their mental, in a sense, I guess. So basically, the name of the game is playing aggressively when you don't have the most perfect matchup. Um, other Pokemon, let's see what we can do for other mods that deal with this. Like I said, you have Keldeo. Um, I mean, there's even niche stuff. Like, Diggersby with Life Warp, for example, just kills everything. Um, I talked about this a little bit in this video I did. I don't know if... I, I, mean, I don't know if that video will be up before this one, but it's a Pokemon of the top 10 Pokemon that aren't in OU. Um, well, that aren't in OU by tiering, but are still good in OU. That kind of thing. Um, stuff like Kirin B. Banded Kirin B can obliterate stall. I mean, obviously, it's a rather unconventional Pokemon. Um, stuff like Gengar proves to be very, very annoying. The Taunt Pain Split set, for example. Though, Weavile's existence makes it not as good as it might have been um, a while ago. Um, Life Orb Calm Mind Clef. Not, to see, not seen too much, but it absolutely obliterates offense. The fact that I say, uh, the reason I'm saying Life Orb is because at um, plus 62 at KO Chansey, even if it has the Violite, and Quagsire actually gets 2 at KO'd, even if it does have a little bit of Spadef. Um, it can't be taken, those Life Orb Moonblasts, it just gets destroyed. Um, and another Pokemon, Ring Dance Manaphy. Like, Manaphy in general isn't a bad Pokemon, um, it's already used to take balance. Throw a Rain Dance on it, and it'll absolutely destroy uh, Stall in general. Rain Dance, Scald, Psychic, um, Tailglow, just obliterates. Um, and it's a really, really nice set in general. Um, and that kind of thing. Even the Rain Dance Call Mindset would be doing a lot of favors for you because uh, Quag is taking a lot from a Rain Boost to Scald. It'll also get burned, and then what? What's it gonna do? Um, but that set is beaten by Amoongus to an extent, so I am a bigger fan of the uh, Rain Dance to attack with Psychic Rest set. But again, these are just Pokemon you can use to kind of deal with Stall. They are not 100% win conditions, they will not always win versus Stall. But again, you need to play offensively. So that's just some of the building things I guess you can do. You can always run stuff like Metacham, um, but they will have the Sableye. I mean, go for hacks, I guess. Like, 
um, that's what I'm saying. Like, stall in general is annoying, but you pretty much just have to worry uh, more so about playing the player than you do have to worry about playing the team. So let me show you an example of someone who's not playing the uh, the team as uh, who's not playing the player as much as they're playing the team. Now, I have no intentions of like roasting this player or anything like that. This is just simply an example I found on the ladder. It could be anyone's battle. Um, this is just what I found, and this is just someone who didn't have a bad stall matchup that was pretty much able to lose the stall because they weren't playing the player as much as they were playing the team. So. Um, again, no hard feelings to this guy, I Glack or whatever. I mean, that's not what this video is not meant to be about him. It's just meant to show the stall. So, as you can see, this guy's team um, isn't too uh, bad versus stall. Bandit Teeth are, like I said, one of the best Pokemon versus this. He has Manaphy in the back, too. Now, even if he's not Rain Dance Manaphy, I didn't actually find out what his Manaphy was. Um, all he really needs to do is bring it in on uh, Quagsire or Skarm, get off a Tail Glow, then Tail Glow again, because they're obviously going to bring in Chansey. So now you're plus six, uh, say Chansey just Seismic tosses you. So you're at around like 75 ish percent. Scald three times, knock out the Chansey, and the game becomes a lot easier for him anyway. Um, but let's just hop into the battle and see what he does. So he leads off with Manaphy. I would not have let off, let off with Manaphy in this in this instance. Um, I guess what he tried to do was uh, predict the Sableye, which I can kind of understand, but like let's just hop into it. So he goes for the knockoff. Turn one, he takes 70% off the Weavile. He already gets he already let his Manaphy um, take that incredibly heavy hit when Manaphy could have been such a threat. This was not needed. I mean, yes, Manaphy can take a hit, but why would you let it take that damage? That is a clear misplay when he has a Landorus T and a Jirachi that will not be doing anything this battle. Jirachi is clean walled by Skarmory and Quagsire, because I assume it's Scarf. I think it is Scarf, actually. And so it's just, it's not doing anything this game. Well, this was not a play he really needed to make. Um, so he just goes for the, the Skull here, and it does absolutely nothing. It does 47 to Weavile. Damage on Weavile doesn't really matter. Now here, Betshabire makes a, a gay Betshabire. <laughs> That's his name. He makes a good play here, and he goes into his Sableye. Um, I believe predicting either the Landorus or the Heracross. But this guy actually goes into Titar. Another kind of whack play, because if he let his Titar's Choice Band get knocked off, it couldn't really do anything. Um, what I would have actually done on that first play was probably going to my Landorus. Now, in what world is your opponent going to Icicle Crash a Manaphy turn 1? They're running Stall. They're not running Hyper Offense where they're trying to predict every turn. They're running Stall. They're not going to play as aggressively. Uh, this guy was able to make this aggressive play into Sableye because he knew there was no way the dude was going to stand with Manaphy. And even if he did stand with Manaphy, Sableye can take the hit, recover it off, get off his Mega Evolution, and heal Bell the damage away anyway. So it wasn't as high risk for him um, as it was for this guy to just stay in. So, okay, he gets the T-Tar on the Sableye. That's a fine play. Um, it is a Banditar, so he's switching out of there because he doesn't want to take the Willowisp, of course. So he goes into his Manaphy, so basically, if that Wisp hit, Manaphy just kind of dies, but even then, Manaphy's at like, um, 25%, so it's pretty much out of the game by turn 4. Just Skulls the Amoongus, there's no way Sableye's gonna stay in here and risk a burn. He could have made an aggressive double there, but again, he's playing... I guess it is hard to always expect someone to make an aggressive play, and often, more often than not, that's not always the right move to just always tr make like really try hard plays. But in general, if stall is annoying to your team, you need to play aggressively to deal with it. So, as you can see here, he goes into Landers here, um, but again, he cannot get rocks up anymore because of the Sableye in the back. Um, I think I'm taking a little too long with this replay. Let's hold on. So, Titar comes in, right? It's Bandit. He goes for the Crunch, gets off a nice 49%, gets a defense drop to add to it, um, so Quag can't even stay in here. Goes for another Crunch on this Quag, uh, I mean on the Skarm, does a lot, gets another defense drop, which is pretty big. Um, and here he just stays in when it's quite obvious that Crunch doesn't kill, gets countered, obliterated off the map. This was not a play that needed to happen. In fact, Quag is now at 57%, so if he ever found the opportunity to bring it in on literally all five of these Pokemon, he could just Stone Edge and kill everything because Quag gets to it killed at that range. Instead he got kind of greedy and sacked his T-Tar and then he lost one of his greatest stall breakers. Even though this did happen, it's fine. He has a hair across in the back that might be able to do something. He mega evolves here and just CCs to knock it out. Weavile comes in, he brings in this, goes into this, Psy Shocks, blah 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 blah, goes into this, goes into Sableye. He doesn't pin missile here for some reason on the Sableye, so now he's threatened again. Again, like I'm saying, this isn't some like insult video to this iGlack guy. It's just showing that this guy was more likely just trying to play the team than he was trying to play the player. He did not make the offensive plays he needed to kind of deal around stall. Again, stall is not going to be the one playing super offensively versus you. It doesn't need to. Most of the time, if your matchup is bad, the player, the stall player can pretty much, you know, kick his feet up, play relaxed, because he can just switch between his six walls, or I guess five walls, plus uh, Weavile slash Pursuiter, and deal with your team. That's the biggest problem people are making. They're not making, like, offensive enough plays to deal with stall. 
You need to play aggressively if your matchup is bad. If your matchup is good, yes, you can relax it out. You can wait. You can wait to strike and you can pay patiently. But the biggest thing you want to do, the biggest problem I see that people do versus stall and just problems in general with battling, is if you have a win condition like Heracross, Manaphy, or Titar, as you can see in this guy's specific battle, don't throw those Pokemon into attacks. You want those Pokemon to stay healthy. You want those Pokemon to be able to do their job. Now if your Pokemon's at like 50%, because you let it take an attack, or at like 60%, because you know, oh, this Pokemon can take two attacks, might as well switch it in as a makeshift counter. Yes, it might have been able to take that one hit, but now in the future, in the same game, it's going to have a lot harder of a time doing work, because that's such a lesser amount of HP, um, it gets worn down much quicker, the other Pokemon can take those risks of just trading with you, because they can trade their Pokemon, but they got rid of your big threat, and that's one of the biggest problems I see that people do with stall. Um, they let their Pokemon either get weakened prematurely, or they're just not playing, um... I guess, aggressive enough or playing the player enough. Now, that's not to say there are some matchups where Stall will just beat you. The majority of Hita Fajita teams that we use get obliterated by Stall. Because we're just using fun Pokemon that most teams just like, they can't deal with stuff like Chance against Sableye, and it happens. If you're using a fun team, unfortunately, Stall will be kind of an issue to the majority of your teams, unless you have like a very, very nice wall breaker in the back. Me and CTC have destroyed Stall with stuff like Glalie, Rampardos, obviously just fun stuff. Because, hey, it does have a niche, I guess, in breaking through stuff because they're just so absurdly powerful. But the fact of the matter is, with a lot of fun teams, Stall will just triumph over those because of Sableye. But again, you can't outplay. Also, people seem to have some kind of mentality that all Stall players will play the team flawlessly. No, people, they're also human. They can make mistakes. Stall isn't just some click buttons type thing. Especially if Stall is a bad matchup, it's not just a, like a click buttons thing. Let me show you an example. Hold on. Ah my favorite replay so this is me in spl7 so like a couple months ago uh versus x-ray for week six of spl i got absolutely throttled by this guy look at this fat stall i'm using disgusting all right um i didn't have a sableye at the time i was actually using mega bro as the win con but as you can see x-ray has a really really nice matchup versus me in general he has taunt talent flame with will o wisp um and on top of that he has what's it called a mega garchomp so let's just you know get through the battle um Da, 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 da. He gets up rocks, you know, he's playing nice. He knocks off my Among Us. Um, you know, he's just doing his thing do, 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 do. And he gets in the Mega Chomp. All right, so the Mega Chomp um, basically can kill every single Pokemon on my team besides Quag and Skarm in one hit so You know, let's just get through this blah 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 Sorry about this. That was kind of long, but he does obliterate me So here I pretty much go for the skull. Don't get a burn. There's nothing and straight off the bat, I'm like, hmm, alright, I guess I gotta click that Skarm. Gone. Fire Fang, gone. He was not playing games with me. X-Ray killed it right there. X-Ray had to play smart. Look, he could've easily stayed in on my Quagsire here and just EQ'd me. I mean, hey, it, two AKOs, right? Um, if he gets good rolls. But why would X-Ray possibly risk the chance of getting two high damage rolls when my entire team is weak to ground and he can just find the right opportunity to bring it in on T-Tar or Chansey and just click EQ? Why would he possibly risk the whole toxic thing? He has no need to do that. Um, and that's the thing, people, like, people get too excited with their win condition. X-Ray played this game really, really nicely because he had such a relaxed, good matchup versus me. He had the Mega Chomp, which obliterated me. Um, he had the Taunt Talent Flame, which he could always use in the back to, you know, mess with my team, spread status, stop the heal bar from Chansey, and that kind of thing. He had a matchup, and he played it really, really well, as you're gonna see. So we're gonna Quag, get burned, get taunted, blah, 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 blah. Um, I try my best to kind of get around this, but it's pretty much to no avail. Right back in the chomp, 60%. Look at that damage. Gone. Gone. He doesn't have to stay in here. Um, I actually make a double in the tar, but it doesn't matter. Um, so basically what happens in this battle is I get obliterated uh, by the mega chomp and just I get 6 0 straight up destroyed. Um, and you guys have seen that video. It's on my channel for one. Um, but basically that's what I'm saying. He had a good matchup. He didn't play stupidly. Um, the only play that might have been bad for him was when he SD'd on Slowbro. If I burned, he could have lost. But, I mean, it's 30%. Um, even that I personally wouldn't have risked that. I would have tried to get the SD off on either a Moongus, Skarm, uh, Titar or Chansey, but I mean, he did it, it worked, it did happen. Like, it is only 30%. Um, basically, what I'm saying is there was only one thing he could have done that was safer than setting up on a 30% move. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. He played as he played relatively smart this game, took proper control of his uh, win conditions, and was able to break through the stall. He wasn't throwing it out willy nilly, and um, he didn't have to play super aggressive because this was one of those really good matchups. Now, let's take that to a different lens if I have a very, very offensive team versus stall. The majority of hyper-offensive teams um, with stuff like 
like Scizor, Bisharp, like that CBB team, for example, with like Bisharp, Scizor, Latios, Garchomp, Landorus, T. That team can't really break stall. In fact, that entire team was obliterated by Quagsire. That's just something that's going to happen. Maybe you can play aggressively around that thing, though. You find the right opportunity to somehow uh, bait in the Sableye, get up a heavy hit. If you're able to get up rocks, you might have to switch a lot to wear it on the opponent. But basically, the main thing with stall that people do not, I guess, take into account is that stall, you're, you, some teams will just not have a good stall matchup. And that's just basically how it is, especially on the ladder. Um, because not all the time on the ladder can you afford to just run like a really like um, stall breaker heavy team because you might just get destroyed by offense or something like that. And it's just problems that you have to deal with. But you can't control you can't control the team matchup unless you okay unless you have like a, just a blatantly bad team. Um, you, you can't control the team matchup. Like if you have a decent team, that decent team might have problems with stall. Um, but you can control your playing ability and you can control reading your opponent and finding the right opportunity to strike and that kind of thing. So I know this video did give a couple of team building situ uh, like team building strategies, but the main goal I want to talk about in this video is basically just there are ways to deal with stall, um, but it pretty much all comes from playing ability and uh, just knowing when to strike, playing aggressively enough and playing the player as opposed to playing the opponent. I hope this video was a little bit helpful on, I guess, just dispelling some of the rumors of stall. Uh, I mean, like I'm saying, people think it's really, really unbeatable, but it's not. Um, and pretty much people should also try different things with team building. If all your teams consist of Scizor, Bisharp, Lead Garchomp, Super Mega Hyper Offense, Thunderous, all that good stuff, you're going to lose to stall. That's just how it is. Like those certain teams, hey, they might work on ladder, but they will lose to stall. Every team should have something that can deal with stall or a strategy that they can employ to deal with stall. Like... Um, I've run many stall teams in the past, but I sometimes I don't lose to it because I think, okay, um, this matchup's obviously going to be annoying, but uh, maybe I can maximize my chances by, you know, um, doubling out on his counter, you know, getting it worn down by rocks, finding the right opportunity to bring in my Keldeo, um, get off the heavy hit, you know, maybe do this, do that. Like, you can always map out a game plan. And again, the biggest thing people need to understand, the stall player is the one using the team of five walls. Are they going to play more offensively, or is the guy with an offense team going to play more offensive? That's what you really need to understand. So... Um, every now and then, yes, you will get a person who plays their stall pretty crazy. They'll be making predictions, all types of stuff. But that's only if their matchup is bad, because then they have to outplay a bad matchup. And the only way to outplay a bad matchup is to outplay the opponent. And that's what you need to do if you have a bad matchup versus stall with your team. So basically, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. And um, yeah, later, guys. Peace.